Cloud Functions second gen helps developers achieve more when deploying their code to a serverless environment. Longer processing times, faster response times with greater cost efficiency, and native integrations with dozens of event sources. Features like these enable developers to take advantage of serverless with more diverse workloads. I introduced some of this new functionality embedded into the new generation of Cloud Functions, but today let's take a deeper dive into how these functions in second gen work and walk through how developers can take advantage of this functionality. These new features in Cloud Functions second gen can be categorized into two key themes, enhanced underlying infrastructure and greater event integrations based on the open source spec cloud events, all while maintaining the same developer contract you're familiar with in Cloud Functions. Write your code, deploy it, and let the serverless platform handle the rest. It is worth sharing what powers the improved infrastructure of this new generation. Second gen leverages Cloud Run under the hood, which is Google's container as a service platform. This is where new second gen functionality, such as concurrency and traffic splitting comes from. The beauty of it is that you don't have to build and bring a container image to Cloud Functions second gen as your ticket for admission, just to use a new feature set. Cloud Functions second gen maintains the same developer experience as its preceding generation. Just bring your code and the serverless platform will handle the rest. All right, let's now dig into how these features work, starting with one of the ones we heard developers ask for the most, running functions with a lot longer execution times. Event-driven functions can now run an additional minute compared to the previous generation, and HTTP functions can run more than six times longer in second generation. This means that you can now bring more complex functions that perform more intensive processing to cloud functions. To demonstrate, we'll run this function using Cloud Functions Python 3.8 runtime. It may not be complex, but it'll run for the maximum timeout. It's important to note that the max timeout is supported across all language runtimes, not just Python. We'll deploy this code as a function called function timeout and invoke it. With the function invoked, we can see the logs from our code directly in the Cloud Functions console. The function counts down minute by minute until it returns a 504 once the timeout has been hit. We can also view execution times for our long running functions in dashboards provided by Cloud Functions. And if we look at how we configure this max timeout, we can do this by appending the timeout parameter at deploy time to override the default timeout of one minute. Now, let's briefly talk about the greater amount of resources that are now available to your functions in second gen. Previously, you were only able to specify how much memory you wanted to make available to your instances up to roughly eight gigabytes, with only up to two CPUs per function instance. Now you're able to specify double the amount of CPUs, up to four vCPUs to allocate to your function, while also doubling the amount of memory you can make available, up to 16 gigabytes. This can help resource intensive workloads that need to process large files, write to an in-memory file system, or even perform parallel processing. Let's move on to traffic splitting. In second generation, Cloud Functions as a platform provides for you automatic traffic splitting between various revisions of your code. With this functionality, you can feel safer rolling out new versions of your code, knowing second gen can make patterns like canary deployments or A-B testing straightforward to implement. Take this example in the diagram where we have a new version of our code that we have deployed. Rather than immediately promoting it to serve all production traffic, we can gradually begin sending traffic to it using second gen, starting with 10%. Let's simulate this scenario by actually deploying a simple HTTP function. There may be a case in which we are using Cloud Function support for environment variables to flip a new feature in our code on or off. But in this example, let's just set the variable version to 1.0.0. To deploy the next version of the code, we supply the new environment variable value to reflect that we are deploying version 2.0.0. Once we have both versions of the code deployed to Cloud Functions, we can actually see that each revision we've deployed is being tracked in the underlying infrastructure, Cloud Run. Now that Cloud Run has shared with us the unique revision IDs for our two versions of our function, we can now declaratively define how traffic should flow to each revision. In our case here, we want to send 90% of traffic to the first version and 10% of traffic to the second version. 
We do so by providing a single parameter to the underlying cloud run service, backing the cloud function with those traffic percentages. Once we begin issuing requests to the function's URL, we can see that we get a simple response that shows what version of the app we are accessing. The majority of our traffic is routed to version one, and a small minority of our traffic is routed to version two, all configured by simple gcloud commands. Speaking of functions handling requests, let's cover one more feature that comes from the new underlying infrastructure in second gen, concurrency. Previously in cloud functions, each instance of your code would handle a single request. This means that as more requests come in, the more compute time your function uses. In Cloud Functions second gen, however, you're now able to define concurrency. That is, having one instance of your code handle multiple requests at the same time. Let's deploy a simple Python 3.8 function. Once we've deployed this function, we can then utilize the underlying Cloud Run functionality and update that Cloud function to handle more than one concurrent request at a time, which is the default. In this case, we'll set this value to eight. We can then use the hey utility to demonstrate how Cloud Functions will handle concurrency. We'll send eight requests at once from eight different workers. In our demo, our Cloud Function only accepts requests from authenticated users, so we will obtain our identity token to pass in our requests using gcloud. And finally, we'll send the request to the URL provided to us by Cloud Functions. The code for this function simply sleeps for 15 seconds. You'll see we deployed the two revisions, the more recent with concurrency at eight and the one before it with concurrency at one. When we hit the function with concurrency at one, we see one request respond quickly and the remaining seven take much longer. This is because we only had one warm instance of our function. Every other request required a new instance of our function to spin up, which takes time. However, after updating concurrency to eight, we see that all our requests complete roughly within the expected 15 seconds. This is because we had one warm instance that could handle all eight requests simultaneously. This brings up a pattern with which you can utilize concurrency with. In both first and second generation, you have the ability to define a minimum number of warm instances that are always ready to handle requests to your function. This allows for lower latency responses from your function, since you don't need to pay the penalty from having your code start up. Now pair this with concurrency. Because a function instance can handle more than one request at a time, you can now actually use concurrency combined with minimum instances. This helps you reduce the amount of min instances you may need to keep around while still ensuring that you can serve a certain amount of requests with lower latency. Note that in the example we evaluated prior, all we have to do is add the min instances parameter when deploying the cloud function. Cloud functions second gen can support up to 1000 concurrent requests. But this maximum for concurrent requests varies by language runtime, so it's advised that you review the documentation depending on what language you want to use with Cloud Functions. Last but not least, let's talk about the new eventing model in Cloud Functions second generation. The previous generation of Cloud Functions had a smaller set of events that could trigger your code's execution, and these were fairly limited. If you wanted to trigger your code outside of this set, you typically had to wire code to publish events to cloud PubSub. By integrating with event arc, we ensure that every event that triggers your code adheres to the cloud events specification and open standard for event data format. This means that your code can consistently handle events in the same format, regardless of what the source is. With these event arc integrations, over 90 plus event sources using cloud audit logs can now be natively created as triggers for event-driven functions. No custom code that you need to wire together just to trigger your code with Google Cloud Events. Of course, you still can utilize some custom event sources with PubSub to trigger your functions. In this demonstration here, we are using the second generation triggers based on event arc and audit logs to process BigQuery event data every time a query is run. We'll use a query in BigQuery now. This one will roughly query 4.5 terabytes of data and take less than 30 seconds to complete. This is a fairly large query, so we might want to use a cloud function to react to its currents, maybe do something like notify admins that it ran. With the query finished, we can get back to our cloud function and see that we are writing out the query information to standard out. But of course, we could extend this to send a message to Slack, do some processing or anything else that we can imagine. BigQuery is just one example. With cloud audit logs and event arc, we can now trigger off dozens and dozens of Google Cloud events. With all of these new features within these two themes, 
Cloud Function second generation considerably improves the experience for developers when compared to its preceding version. But for all of you who have built on top of the first generation, it's important to note your function in the first generation will continue to run as is. Over time, if you find the features suit your needs or improve your workflow, you can begin to deploy these functions to the second generation. So thanks for spending this time digging into Cloud Functions second gen. If you want to learn more, then check out the documentation and code labs to get familiar with the improved developer experience. This is Stephanie Wong. See you next time.